So now we're going to talk about movements versus muscles. In the previous section, we, we talked about um, this isolation of muscle function and how it's hard to really do. And, and instead of looking at individual muscles that are participating in a movement, we want to look at them as groups. So talking about elbow flexors instead of individual uh, elbow flexors, right? So just to show you the complexity of what you need to manage, I want you guys to stand up for a second. And I want you to palpate the front of your stomach, put your fingers right on your six pack there, your abdomen. And I want you to bend forward a little bit. And I want you to identify what you feel. And you probably felt nothing. You probably felt the skin bunch up a little bit and you felt a little bit of the tissue, but you didn't really feel a lot of muscle contraction. You thought you would because you did trunk flexion and you, your abdominals are flexors, right? You, and you're going to train your abdominals. You're going to do crunches but you didn't feel it. Now what I want you to do is keep your fingers right where they're at and I want you to extend back. And now in standing, going, doing trunk extension, you feel your abdominals contracting. I want you to take your hands and palpate the back or your back muscles, which you thought was supposed to be contracting and you should feel that they're relatively flaccid. There's no contraction there. Keep your hands on your back in your extended position and I want you to bend forward now and I want you to go past neutral into like a, like a, you're going to touch your toes, but don't go all the way down. And you should feel muscle contraction. Now, both of those contractions were eccentric muscle contractions. So the movement, the joint movement that you were performing, flexion first and then extension second, was exactly opposite of the muscle participation that you expected. So you see how trying to identify which muscles are working is not necessarily the point. The focus should be which muscle groups are working because I don't need to, I don't care about the individual muscles. I want to make sure I'm getting the right muscle in the first place. Because if you picked abdominals and you went forward, you picked the wrong answer. Now, just for one last thing, and it will reinforce when you look at accelerating past gravities, I want you to stand up again and I want you to bend forward again and you shouldn't feel anything in the front. Go back to neutral. I want you to do it one more time, but I want you to do it really fast. And you should feel the abdominal muscles contract. In this case, you were going forward but you were trying to move faster than gravity. And in this aspect, the trunk flexors came on. So hopefully this little example takes you through the application of what we're gonna be doing. So when we look at movements, this right here, what you see on the screen, these five things, these are the basic things that the body can do. You're either pushing things away from you, pulling things towards you, you're doing some set of triple extension. This is looking at the ankle, hip, and knee. So sit to stand or squat. You're bending either at the spine or at the waist like a hip hinge, or you're twisting, so the pelvic girdle and shoulder girdle in different directions. And so when we start looking at the um, pushing movements, pulling movements, now we start getting our scapular, shoulder, elbow, wrist movements involved, and all the muscles that go along with that. But I've listed whole sets of exercises here or movements and didn't list one individual muscle, right? Because we don't need to. You want to be a master of movements. And again, if you can't control the individual muscles that are there, who cares what muscle is, is working in that aspect? As long as you can identify the muscle that crosses that axis of that movement you're trying to do, then you can identify your participation. But if you focus more on the movements, you're going to do better service to your patient and your clients. We have the lift and bend, so the squat and the hinge. And we have certain levels of pelvic changes and hip extension, knee extension. And the reason why I'm going through this is that there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of exercises. And instead of trying to learn and memorize each exercise, if you just learn these fundamental movements of pushing, pulling, squatting, bending, twisting, five things, and you learn the biomechanical and the physiological responses for that, you've covered 99% of the exercises you're going to do outside of the individual isolation exercises for rehab or for sports specific skill movement, but for general fitness, general conditioning, that's it. And when we look at these movements, this is what we need to get away from is training muscle groups, right? This is, these are the muscle charts that you see that are in the gym for like chest day and shoulder day and back day, which just trained your deltoids three days in a row and now they're shot. And then you have a leg quad dominant day and hip dominant day. And all this is just gym myths that won't go away. So when we look at muscle groups, it's better to know your general muscle groups. Even though we're talking about movements, you still should know the individual muscles. But remember, groups, not individual muscles. 
When we look at pushing activities, this encompasses whether you're going to be sagittal plane or frontal plane dominant. You learn how to flat bench press. You know how to, you'll learn how to dumbbell press. You'll learn how to do a fly. You'll learn incline, overhead press, decline press. And think about all the exercises that you do that are compound movements and you're pushing weight away from you. What, think about what exercises I'm missing that aren't isolated like tricep row pull down or bicep curl, overhead press, whether barbell, dumbbell, close grip, wide grip, decline flat. That's all the pushing activities for the upper body pushing aspect. When you look at pulling, pulling things towards you, whether you're in the horizontal plane or the vertical plane, whether you're wide grip or close grip, that's any type of pull down row, upright row, even lateral raise, what other back exercise am I missing? This one's 100%. Think of all the leg exercises you do, all of them, right? And it is some combination of triple extension through the lower extremity, so ankle, knee, hip. And so whether you're using two legs or one leg, whether you are have the weight above your shoulders or below, like squat versus deadlift, whether you're doing a leg press, a lunge, a step up, a split squat, anything, it's all level of triple extension. Name me one leg exercise outside of isolated knee extension or ham curls that is doing that, and you can't. Or at least I have no ones yet. And then you have some level of twisting and rotation, which it takes care of almost all core activities. That's what the core is really doing, is, ro is integrating the pelvic girdle and the shoulder girdle. Then we have bend, which is some level of trunk flexion or hip flexion, semi-stiff-legged deadlift. And when you focus on these seven movements, exercise becomes so much easier. And then when we look at these seven movements, understanding human movement from a functional anatomy perspective becomes much more manageable. So start looking in terms of muscle groups and global movements instead of trying to identify and memorize individual exercises. So hopefully this was helpful and uh, see you next lecture.